Hey there, everybody. Uh, since I've been doing this this uh, playthrough of uh, Allods for quite a while now, I thought it might be time that I uh, introduced you to the other classes and races, so that way if you have any interest in playing, you might be able to make a decision that's a, that's a good fit for you. Not to mention it probably wouldn't be bad to have an update, because the handful of videos for newer players are kind of older, and of course, knowing me, I'll put this up, and it'll be out of date in like a week or two when they drop a new uh, update, but, you know, it's just kind of how things go. So I figured at first I'd be kind of general with the, the factions as a whole. Um, basically, they're heavily driven by the members of the, uh, by the, the humans of those factions. So at the top, we've got the League, which is consistent of the Canians, the Elves, and the Gibberlings. And then we've got the Empire, which is made up of the Zataganians, the other humans, the Orcs, and the Arisen. And then we've got these neutral factions that, once they reach a certain point, they decide which faction they want to be a part of. We have the Pryden, which, if you've played World of Warcraft, function very similarly to the uh, Pandaren, where they start at level 1, um, and they go through their own isolated story up to a, a, sp a particular point, and then they may decide which faction they join. So they're technically not even part of a faction through like the first 20-odd 20 20 levels um, while they're questing. Um, and then we've got the Aldoi. Um, I'll make sure to throw up a picture right about now uh, showing what this class looks like. They're very heavily based off of um, Greek mythology, um, and even all based off of their name, which is like a type of uh, singer uh, that's uh, found uh, from Greece. Um, and the idea was is that they would sing to like make people uh, to to raise morale and stuff. Um, but basically, all you need to know about them is that they are kind of like a restri they're a restricted uh, race in the fact that you can only be them through what's known as reincarnation, which is a method where you take your max level character, main character, and you use a reincarnation potion shard, whatever you want to call it, and you create another character that is linked to that first character. They keep all of your cash shop or all of your boutique um, uh, stuff, and they can have linked, uh, they have stats that are modified by the main uh, progenitor character. Um, and basically just kind of have a handful of other bonuses that a regular alternate character would have. Um, so really, reincarnation is probably the best way to make alts. Really, the only other reason you make an alt while you're leveling is just so that way you can kind of get a different feel if you're like me and you're an altaholic. But reincarnations are really the way to go. Um, and reincarnations can be any race, including the Aldoi. Um, but the special thing about the Aldoi is they start at level 75. Um and then move on to the story from there. Uh, so you'll be much closer to level cap. So um, it's a it's another option when you get to a max character and you want to go ahead and just do a reincarnation, but you don't really want to fight to level it from one to cap. You can go with an Aldoi, and you'll just be like, I think it's right now cap's level 90, so you're only uh, 15 levels short of cap. Um, so it's a much shorter grind there. I figured now I'd go ahead and break down the races and generalize them in such a way that you can kind of get a basic understanding so you can get a better fit for what race you think you might want to play if lore is something that guides you. Um, we have the Canians, which are the, as I'm going to call it, the blue team humans. Um, they are all about uh, the, the equality amongst everyone um, with when it, uh, it comes to their rights. Uh, they are very democratic in nature, and that's really what kind of drives them separate from the red humans or the Zataganians uh, separately. Um, so kind of think of them as America uh, for the simplest uh, definition. Um, we've got the elves, which are in this game a uh, one of the oldest races. Um, they're heavily uh, driven uh, by emotion and what they would like to do. Um, they are also, again, very big on free will, that kind of a thing. That's going to be a common theme amongst those members of the League or Blue Team. Um, but they are, like I said, heavily driven by emotion, so you can have, like, elves ranging all the way down from, like, all the way from, like, highly intelligent, uh, very scholarly, wanting to learn the arts of, like, magic and whatnot, all the way down to, like, the delinquents who are literally just there for, like, phys physical pleasures. So they're, on the League side, they're literally, like, the symbol of, like, the highest of intelligence, and on the, on the, uh, 
the Empire side, they're literally, like, used as, like, a sexual symbol. We've got the Gibberlings. Um, they are a kind of a unique race to this game. Um, they are regularly, uh, uh, well, commonly born as triplets. Um, and they're all kind of connected. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say psychically, but kind of. Um, kind of like how you think like twins can kind of think, uh, read each other's minds kind of a deal. They're just kind of emotionally connected to one another. Um, but they are the, really the... Uh, the innovators of the of the league, the ones that kind of come up with the neat ideas, they're actually the ones that allowed for the uh, ability of astral travel, the ability to travel through the magical space between each floating island. Um, and if I recall correctly, it was basically by, by a pure accident. Um, they were when the world was whole. Um, they were a seafaring race um, as a means of trying to just not, not be bothered. They their favorite things literally to do are to sleep, eat, and fish. Um, so, basically, uh, the accident happened where one of them stumbled upon, like, a fl like, a, like, this strange stone while he was fishing, and just kind of threw it on his fishing boat, and he ended up floating off, uh, like, off the side of an island, so in this game, think of, like, the world's flat, you can literally fall off the side of the world you're standing on, um, and it's uh, and so he just like floated off the side on his boat, but because he had this weird rock, he was able to float and continue floating his boat over out into open air, uh, open into open space, as if he was on like a spaceship instead of just a regular boat. So basically, Gibberlings created this game's equivalent to uh, space travel or airships, if you're fa familiar with the Final Fantasy series. We have on Red Team. We've got the Zataganians. Um, as the color implies, um, they are very... Um, I wouldn't want to use the word communistic, but they are very much wanting to be led by a single individual where Canians are looking for um, a society where everyone has a right to set has a right to say what they uh, to have a right to say what they want about their government and how, what decisions their government makes. The Zataganians are more of the mindset that a government ruled by more than one person is cumbersome. Um, it makes uh, very slow decision making and is terrible when you're a government trying to maintain peace by taking over everyone is your solution. Um, you create peace by enforcing it. Um, and so they are single-minded in basically complete domination as a means of ending all war. So, again, these guys are like the hero of their own story, so you can kind of look at it as if they're bad or they're good. It's just kind of on your ideologies of how that works. We have the Orcs, which are a prior to uh, siding with the Zataganians, were a nomadic and shamanistic tribe. Um, they were basically uh, split all over the place. They didn't always agree with each other, and they never really did get along. That is still seen uh, within game uh, after uh, the, the unification with the Zataganians to work together. Um, you'll see different factions of orcs, or creating arbitrary factions even, um, like, for instance, the Zadiganian army, uh, they, uh, when they're going through training, they actually are broken up into two teams. And the orcs are probably the most aggressive about which team is better. Um, just so that way they have someone to practice against uh, is why they have two teams in the first place. But the orcs make it ridiculous. Um, so they find excuses to have reasons to fight with each other all the time. Um, they are the muscle behind the... Uh, uh, the Empire, uh, so they will be mostly playing the big, more brutish classes, the ones that do a lot more of the, the melee damage, with the exception of with them being shamanistic, they have access to some spells. Um, so, like, their, their races are a little bit, uh, classes are a little bit more uh, restrictive than, say, the Zataganians or the Canians. Then we have the Arisen, which is this game's uh, token undead. Um, they take it a little bit uh, on a, take a little bit of a different spin on it, um, with one key uh, difference being that they're more like undead cyborgs. Um, they are a race known as the Zim. Um, uh, and what basically, they uh, they are the uh, oldest race in the game. Um, but only within the last couple centuries have they started showing up again. Um, they've left relics all over uh, Sarnot. And 
since they are just now uh, awakening, they are actually now um, gaining more and more intelligence as more and more of them awaken as they learn about themselves and about their people. Uh, and in fact, when they first were waking up, the Zadiganians thought that they were literally just mindless uh, mindless zombies with which they could put through manual labor, and as time went on, it was more discovered the level of intelligence intelligence these uh, beings can have. Um, they are the uh, basically the uh, engineering department of the Empire, so whereas the League has the Gibberlings leading uh, innovation, it's the Arisen on the uh, Empire. Uh, one key thing to keep in mind, though, is that uh, it's not going to be uncommon when playing through the game, no matter what faction you are, to be fighting Arisen, purely because of the fact that uh, the people of Zim, or the descendants of Zim, or the Zims, um, or the Arisen, as simply called, uh, have a problem dealing with the fact that when they come back, they may still be, uh, they may have been tied to a cult within the Zim people, uh, of the cult of Tep. Uh, and so they ha will have a completely different mindset, almost like they've been programmed to behave completely differently than the rest of the Arisen. Uh, so you'll, what happens is, is when the Arisen w awaken, they can either be non-hostile and willing to take in the information that other Arisen and other members of the Empire are giving them, or they can awaken and be incredibly hostile and attempt to take out anyone who's near them. Um, so if you want, if you're interested in playing like a race that's got a lot more history to kind of delve into, that would be something I would look into. And then we have the Pridon. Uh, it's another, more like a shamanistic people. They're very similar to, uh, like, Eastern religion, or um, if you want to think of it like uh, the Native American ideals, where it's very, um, very simplistic, uh, but it's very um, nature-driven. Um, whereas, like, orcs, when they think, you think of, like, shamanism, it's more of, a, like, the, the voodoo end of things. Um, pride ends, it's more along the signs of being one with nature. Um, past that, um, I don't have a whole lot of information. I've not actually played a lot of pride in myself, and finding information is a little bit hard. Um, I do know that playing through their individual quest line up to, like, 20-something um, will actually give you a lot of detail, but outside of that general information i don't have a whole lot to give and the same with the aldoi um, i've not had the opportunity to play through their beginning storyline um and so i don't know a whole lot about them either um but uh both of these uh these races basically are just another option to choose from um i do know um stylistically i'm more in favor of pride in over like the human races and they have the closest thing to the widest selection of uh, classes. As far as Aldoi, I'm not sure what they're available to do, um, but I can double check that and uh, add that onto the screen right here, like showing you just the list of classes they can be. Um, but other than that, uh, that's more or less the races and their breakdown. Um, so just kind of think of as the League is like Team America, and then uh, the Empire is like, I guess like Team Russia. They They're very much about for your country and very much about for yourself now for the class breakdowns i'm just going to pick the canyons because it's going to be the easiest to walk through and the class names for the most part make sense um the reason i say class names is because everyone um has a different name for their classes so for like for instance i'm playing i'm covered over the warrior class in the canyons but if i go to elves you see where it's grayed out. It says warrior. Well, as Canians, it's called the champion. Gibby, uh, Gibberlings call it the brawler. The Pride Inn refer to it as the warlord. The Zadaganians call it the vanquisher, and so on. It's a terminology that this game uses called archetypes. Basically, all that means is, is that instead of having racial skills that are just to your specific race, so... You won't just have class uh, abilities that all Canians have. You will also have a archetype racial skill. So a Canian warrior is different from a Zadaganian warrior by one or one or two key skills that modify the way that they play. Um, now, as for going into detail about how those work, I don't have a whole lot of help for you there. Um, so I apologize for that one. 
but I figured since I can go to Canyons and they have access to every class, I can sit down and kind of give you a general idea of what they do along with like the basic information the game go ahead and gives you. Um, so first we're going to go ahead and go with the class Warden. Um, so what the Warden is in this game is basically they are a nature-based spellcaster. Um, kind of, uh, if you've if you're familiar with World of Warcraft, they're kind of like a weird hybrid between a shaman and a druid. Um, so they like to melee with claw weapons, as you can see on this character, as well as the fact that um, they have a lot of buffs, debuffs, and healing, mostly. Um, they are also one of the pet-based classes in this game, um, so I guess you could throw Hunter in on that. Um, the pet is actually based off the race and gender. Um, some races have different pets uh, between, based off of their gender, some don't. Um, the pet that you have is permanent, um, so in this case with the, the male, uh, with the male canian, you will have a bear. Um, there are means of changing what that, that your pet looks like. Um, in free-to-play, it's found within the cash shop, and then on pay-to-play, it's something that you earn through dungeon runs. And uh, also through, um, certain events where you can earn a special currency that lets you buy cosmetics uh, within your capital city. Um, the druid is one of the healing classes of the game as well, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, they are more of a heal over time, um, as well as when it comes to their damage, they're more about rooting an enemy in place, like crowd control style, and then dealing damage over time. Um, and then, of course, they've got their melee build. And then we've got Magicians, which would be like the Mage. Um, so they are magic damage. Um, I think, if I recall correctly, they focus on mostly fire um, and lightning. Mostly it's kind of like the elements of the spells that they've got. Um, so they're just raw damage. Um, that's like the big thing to keep, to keep in mind. Um, so if you like flinging spells and you like making things, just go away. That's the way to go. We have the Summoner class. Um, conveniently called the Warlock. Um, if you're familiar with World of Warcraft, this is the Warlock class. Um, the key difference is, is that this is actually a healing class. Um, they are capable of dealing damage between their pets and their damage over time, but they also have the ability to sap blood or draw blood from their enemies to use as healing spells, as well as uh, defensive and, and offensive spells. Um, so that's something else to keep in mind. Um, they're typically pretty decent um, in PvP um, when it comes to PvP healer. Um, as far as PvE content, that's a little hit or miss, but then again, healers and PvE are a little bit weird in this game um, with how in-game content is scaled right now, especially on pay-to-play, that you just kind of get either you survive the hit and basically don't take any damage. Your tank will survive a hit and basically take no damage, or they just die. Um, so it's better to have, like, uh, either heals that prevent the damage instead, or having, like, shields you can slap on top of people, and we'll get into that. We have the Paladin archetype. Um, as it sounds, it's the, uh, the holy-based damage melee fighter. And I say holy-based damage, but that's not necessarily true. They have holy magic, um, but they still are mostly a physical damage-based class. Um, their key, uh, class, uh, ability really is the fact that they can store the three highest damaging attacks that hit them into like these faith bubbles for lack of a better way to put it and it gives you i think it's like five seconds to do something about each one and so like the lowest damaging one will be the first to hurt you and then it'll kind of work its way down the line and as you get a new hit it'll add to the list um, and it always throws out something if you take like a critical hit so it protects you from crits more than anything and you gain skills that allow you to mitigate that damage that's held within those bar that your faith barrier, um, or to reflect it back at your opponent, or to um, completely negate it, but take some debuffs, that kind of a thing. Um, they have a couple of self heals in combat. Um, they are like the tanking class of the game. Um, they are top tier. Uh, right now, currently, uh, just because of where they can mitigate damage that way. Um, so they can prevent those, oh, I'm dead kind of attacks. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. If you're very interested in tanking, Paladins currently are the top tier. Don't let that discourage you from other classes, though, because you will still find a role. If nothing else, being an off-tank. 
we have the 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 healer or the cleric in this case. So the healer class, kind of think of it like a priest. Um, they focus mo mainly on heals healing spells. They do have um, some instant. Uh, they do have some levels of uh, damage too. They have pretty high damage output, um, at least early game. Um, I've not had a whole lot of in-game um, experience with these. Um, these are uh, like the PvP healer. Um, they're capable of doing PvE content as well. Like basically every class can do PvE to an extent. Just some classes are way better at PvP than others. Um, they mostly focus on, like I said, healing, um, but they also have um, a couple of buffs, and then they, uh, on like solo content, they're very good at dealing like really fast burst damage. But then they have a lot of cooldowns instead. Um, whereas, like, I believe the Magician still has, like, a mana bar. Um, the Cleric does not, the uh, the Healer does not. Instead, they have um, Fanaticism, um, which only affects certain skills. So, for the most part, the only thing kind of holding you back on damage with a Healer is your cooldowns. Um, so, that's something to keep in mind. But that does mean when you're doing solo content going through, you're only tied to your cooldowns. You're not sitting there waiting on a mana bar to refill. You're not worrying about keeping up with it. Another th thing to keep in mind is a druid also uses a mana bar. We have the psionicist. Um, these are like psychics, for lack of a better way to put it. They mostly deal in, um, uh, what's it called, uh, debuffs on your opponents, if I recall correctly, and then damage. Um, literally just psychics so if you like the idea of just being able to like literally like do like psychic damage to people just by like staring at them menacingly i think you'll like it the scout is currently still and has been for a while the most op class in the game this is your long range uh bow user crossbow user um or your close range beat the crap out of things, and get the heck out. Um, they are capable of doing uh, both uh, uh, supporting roles a little bit, but mostly their two biggest things are damage, um, so they're very much a damage class, as well as they're capable of tanking. Um, capable and should are a word that I would stress there, but they are capable, um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, so very... Whereas other classes have like one role they're really, really, really good at, depending on the patch, scouts are really capable of doing damage or tanking. We have the warrior uh, class. Um, it focuses on both attack and defense, much like the paladin does. Um, and the di biggest difference being that they focus on doing buffs and debuffs to themselves. Uh, buffs to themselves... Um, through shouts and whatnot, kind of like all our World of Warcraft style, as well as um, being like, I guess, somewhere around like the second best tank, I believe. Um, but that might go to Engineer. Um, so that's kind of a, a tie there for me. Um, but it's just kind of like another option. Um, they are very much a, a, they are another very powerful damage class. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. I think that's really all I've got to say about that one. I don't have a whole lot of experience with that one, nor with the next one. All right, so we've got our bard. Much like what it sounds like, you're using music. Um, you're basically like a walking buff stick. Um, uh, you basically like making other people awesomer. That is your goal, and that is what you do. I think just about every class technically, I think, falls under the attack category, so you're capable of actually like killing stuff but I think that's pretty kind of self-explanatory um, so if you like the idea of just making people awesomer this is for you engineer you like running around with big elect uh, big massive cannons to shoot things with good you like uh, little robot sentries that you can set down to shoot at things good you like putting uh, big uh, uh, force fields around people so that way they don't die or yourself so you don't die good do you like being a tank well you can possibly do that and do you like basically just making things not exist good um, uh, engineers are another really really good class um, when it comes to the current patch uh, so right now they're just kind of almost required to have in a 
in in-game raids and in-game in-game dungeons just because of all of the utility this class has. Because of how um, like pay to play, we're having an issue with we still have an issue of getting like just blasted out of uh, thin air. Uh, the tanks do getting blasted out of thin air by a boss mob. Um, healers kind of take a more of a back seat, more of just kind of mitigating like the damage over time stuff that bosses do or like uh, ads do. Um, the engineer is capable of making it so that your tank doesn't die, or if he is the tank, make it so he doesn't die in one hit. Um, so an engineer paladin combo is really, really strong. And then we have right here the demonologist. The demonologist is an interesting thing. So they are shapeshifters. What they're capable of doing is drawing upon the demonic power of the warp and being able to shapeshift into demons of the warp to be able to di dish out damage, to be able to tank, and to be able to be a support, a mild support, mostly damage and tanking. Um, so you've got, and you also have a, a form of travel form which conveniently is also faster than the starting mount that you will get at level 5 or 6. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind if you like being able to go through areas quickly. The, so, uh, the Demonologist is one of the fastest characters when it comes to getting around the map early game. Um, if you like playing stuff kind of like the Druid from World of Warcraft where you can just transform into different animals, in this case you transform into different demons, um, just so that way you kind of get a different play style every now and again. This might be the class for you. Or if you like being able to be versatile for your group, um, say one day you've only got somebody who can, uh, you need you only need to be damaged. You can run around in your, uh, you can run around in one of your other forms that are capable of dealing damage. If you need to be a tank, just pop into big old demon form right here and just literally tank everything. Um, He's not the best tank in the world, but he's definitely a good substitute if you absolutely need one. Um, if you need a, a fallback just for something to work with. Um, but all in all, I do think that this class is very, very unique. <laughs> we got a T-pose there. Uh, so that's really the, the, the gist of what you're starting with. Um, hopefully I can kind of get more updated information as things go. I might even try to start, for instance, a Pride and an Aldoy on a class I've not played before, just so that way I can get a little bit more experience with it and so I can explain it better in a more updated video to farther down the line. Um, hopefully this will help you decide what you're interested in being in. Um, more than anything, I would just be happy for people to show up and try the game out. Um, so, this is me, Measle. Um, if you want it looking for me online, I'm either running around as Sakir uh, on, my, on my playthrough, uh, currently on the Empire side, to kind of get a little bit be a better understanding of like the lore on the Empire side. Um, if you see me when I'm not recording, I'll be playing around as Gork. Um, I am a Orc Paladin, currently working on getting to endgame. Um, I'm fairly close to cap, but I'm still pretty far behind in getting all of my rubies, so that's something to keep in mind. But if you're looking for someone on the Smuggler's Paradise pay-to-play server, that's where you'll find me. Um, see y'all next time. Peace.